The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It was Saturday afternoon. And the occasion was a retreat for mostly young people who were in the process of discerning what God was calling them to be and to do. These young people had gathered with several other people. They had heard presentations by a career counselor. They had heard presentations by a seminary professor offering Bible study about ways that God acts. They had been in worship and had heard sermons. It was that Saturday afternoon that Floyd stood up. <coughs> And Floyd started to talk about his story. He started to talk about the way that when he was a young man, people started to talk to him about a certain sense that they had about what he ought to do with his life. And when they talked, he had this experience in his gut that said, no, that's not me. That's not the path that I have lined out. But they kept talking to him. And over time, his insides caught up with what they were saying from the outside. He was telling his call story. And at some point, he elected to go on to seminary and to become a pastor. And then he talked about how down the line, people started to approach him. And his insides said, no, that isn't me. All of this was very disconcerting for many of us who were sitting in the room because, quite frankly, this isn't the way we had imagined it was for our bishop. We had had this sense that here was a man who must have felt a deep calling from inside of himself to be a pastor and to be a bishop that God worked inside of him. And what he was describing was an experience where though he had experienced great blessing in his ministries, he had seen so many ways that God's grace had been multiplied in front of his eyes in individuals and communities, but he had also seen and he had had at various times in his ministry, both as a parish pastor and as a bishop, he had had to deal with the messiness of human life. He had had to deal with the, the conflicts and the pettiness and the ugliness of it all. The call was a call to something very challenging. And for us, to hear him talk about ways that for him, the external call, the call that came to him from outside of himself, that was brought to him by messengers, now in hindsight he could say messengers of God. That call, that invitation to consider something that he couldn't possibly consider. That call. Somehow he had to wait for 
his internal, his inside sense of call to catch up with that call that came from outside of him. Today we hear a story about a very young woman, Mary. She heard a call too. It came in the form of a messenger from God, Gabriel, an angel who appeared to her and said, Hail, favored one. And she said, Oh my. And he lined out for her what her role was going to be, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, she would become pregnant. And she would bear a child, and he would be the son of the Most High. All of that happened just before what we heard today. And she listened, and she said, well, how can this be? How can I get pregnant? I haven't been with a man. I haven't had sexual relations. How can this possibly be? And he said, with God, nothing is impossible. And she responded, here I am. Let it be with me according to your word. Today is the day within the Lutheran tradition and with many Protestant traditions where we focus on the faithfulness of Mary and her response. But one of the challenges that I find myself wrestling with is that in our hearing today, we hear that almost immediately after hearing that and responding yes, she took that 10-day journey down to Judea to see her relative Elizabeth. The angel had told her about Elizabeth too. Elizabeth was old enough that people were pretty confident that she wasn't going to be able to have children. And yet she was six months pregnant. And Mary rushed down to see her relative Elizabeth. I imagine that she was having a hard time with this call that she was hearing, and she wasn't sure what to make of it. And so she goes down and she sees Elizabeth, and as soon as she greets Elizabeth, what happens? The baby inside of Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit and begins to say the most crazy kinds of things. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. How is it that this would happen to me, that the mother of my Lord would come and visit me? Blessed are you for believing that the promise may come true. In the midst of that moment, and quite honestly, as a guy, I can't quite imagine what it would be like to have a six-month-old jump in my womb. I'm guessing some of you women have a greater sense of that, of the kicks and the movement and all of that. And yet, what we hear is that the Holy Spirit is incredibly active, and what Mary gets is probably what she needed, indeed what she needed most. She got yet more external affirmation of God's call to her ministry of being the mother of the Lord. Now, Elizabeth keeps talking about how blessed Mary is. Let's talk about what that blessing means. Let's talk about what it means for Mary to say yes. The reality is that for somebody in her situation, particularly marital status, to show up pregnant all of a sudden, really, by the rules, subjects her to the potential of being stoned to death. That's what's at risk for Mary. And if she doesn't die by stoning for being caught pregnant, <coughs> then she's at risk of having her future husband jettison her, call off the wedding, abandon her. And if that doesn't happen, she's also at risk of her father and her father's household getting rid of her as well. 
there is incredible risk for this young woman as she says yes to what the Lord has called her to do. It's hard for us to imagine how risky it is to be merry on this day. And yet she says, let it be with me according to your word. I've heard it suggested this week that part of why she made haste to get down to her relative in Judea was precisely a self-protective piece to get away from where she had grown up so that her pregnancy may not be so easily detected, at least in those early days, and so that she may be kept safe. I don't know. But what we know is that it was a risky, risky proposition for her to say yes to this call. And yes, she did say, and today she hears Elizabeth say, and bless that yet again. We also know that this very call that she says yes to, this blessing that is actually very challenging and difficult, will continue for the duration of her son's life as she travels even to that other mountaintop where she will watch him being betrayed and crucified. When God calls us to ministry and it is a blessing, it is not always comfortable or easy. Oftentimes, God's call for us is precisely to something that we would much rather say, no, that's not me. Leave me alone. Many times when God calls us to do something, whether it be within the community of faith or whether it be in our vocations out in the world with the work that we have been called to and gifted for many times as we are called to that. It is not to something that we can easily say, yeah, that's me. I want to do it. Oftentimes it is a call to do and to be things that we would much rather say, no, that isn't me. I don't want to do it. We, like Mary, may experience ourselves in a situation where the external call seems so outrageous that we can't possibly easily say yes to it. Our internal sense of call doesn't match up easily. Sometimes, like Floyd, we need time for the internal call to catch up with that external call. And sometimes when we're in that position like Mary, we need people in the community who know us and who have seen us and, and have recognized in us the gifts to affirm that. And so sometimes we're called to be Elizabeth, aren't we? We're called to recognize and to watch and to say to people, this is what I see you gifted for doing and this is how I see you living that out in your daily life. This is the mission and ministry that God has for you as I see it. There are times when we need to affirm for other people what God is doing in their lives. And there are times when we need other people to affirm for us what they see God doing in our lives. And so today we gather and we hear this story of Mary who is able against incredible odds and in, in the face of incredible danger to herself, was able to say, yes, let it be with me according to your word. And today we hear a story of Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit who spoke bold things. And we hear Mary sing that incredible song that we sang just a few moments ago about the magnificence of God's grace and God's love as she reached back into the history of the story of the people of Israel. And she sang Hannah's song, a song that Hannah sang when it was clear that she would not possibly have a baby 
then she gave birth to Samuel. And Mary reached back into her heritage and she brought forth all these images of God and the powerful things that God does because God cares for everybody, the greatest and the lowliest. And God brings everybody into a place of blessedness. Mary speaks boldly only because there comes that point where that internal sense of call and that external sense of call come together for her. And we too are called to witness, to bear witness to all the things that God is doing in our midst. The ways that Christ is present for us today. And in the midst of our call is to, first of all, hear God's call for us and respond. And at the same time, to see and to bear witness to others about their call. So that they can respond as well. For that is the witness that we have received. And that is the witness that we are to bear.